Welcome. The service will begin soon. Join us. Advent Week 4, Service Love, 12-17-22, the fourth Saturday of Advent. Our prelude tonight is All Belongs to Him.
All right. Thank you, Corey. That was very pretty. So good evening once again, everybody. Welcome back to Lebanon. And you may be wondering, why are we doing this service tonight? Well, it just so happens that there is a little bit of time to get this done since we didn't have a lot since I didn't have the time to do so uh, this past week. So we finished both classes with a B average, meaning that this semester, which will, which will be one to remember, is now officially over. Thank you. So in the announcements, you will hear what's going to happen next, leading up to the spring semester. Tonight, we have reached the last theme of Advent, which is love. We went to, I went to Providence this afternoon, this morning, and it's this afternoon. And it was just your average trip to Providence Place and then back across the street to the station. Now, I would say, if you're going to go to Providence by train, give yourself a game plan because basically what happens is you end up you're just in that one neighborhood and then you end up back at the station either an hour and a half or two hours or in some cases three hours before your scheduled departure time so i would suggest like here's what i did i called ad yeah Amtrak and told them, you know, I don't want to spend the whole day up there. I just wanted to spend a few hours up there. So knowing what I know about their departures and things like that, I asked them, so what about the one before what was originally scheduled, which was 5 p.m.? Well, we figured, you know, we, you know, we don't want to wait that long. We weren't going to be up that up. We didn't want to be up there that long anyway. So they said, how about the 219? Tell them, yes, that works. So you figure, give yourself maybe three, maybe four hours up there maximum if you're going to do that. Driving up there is different, but I would not suggest driving up there. I mean, if you really don't want to do that, that is your choice. So, okay, so we visited the other, this side of Connecticut, which means we now have to face the fear again. The next trip. We're going to be up from, with my friends, Shoreline East and Metro North as well. I saw the M8 today, and again, it was looking at me like, like, why aren't you using me? It's like, well, you guys don't, don't, you guys don't go where I, where I was going, yet. So obviously there might be the Rye, Marinac, or Grand Central. Um, obviously we want to say Grandma, so maybe Rye or Marinac is probably best, and of course Grand Central could be done individually. Which also includes that reset I was telling you about. This reset was a is a mental reset. Basically, it's getting used to going downstate again and understanding the fact that West Haven now is just a stop. And which is really where these two bullet points come into play. So obviously that reset is coming soon. That is happens to be on Pi Day. So I decided Baltimore would be a nice place to go. Just visit the Inner Harbor again, just like today, just for a few hours. Because I've never actually seen the rest of the ride only beyond Wilmington. So it's a good opportunity to just see the rest of its path from Boston to D.C. <clears throat> And a reminder, believe it or not, next Saturday is Christmas Eve. 
It came up. It came up quick, didn't it? That means we will have a Christmas Eve service here next Saturday. Anything else you want to talk about? No? Well, it is week four of Advent, and week four is the sign of love. Showing God's love that he has for us in the ultimate gift that we will receive next Sunday. So receive the call to worship. We are always looking for evidence that God is with us. That sign is in the one to come, the one that God is sending. We want to know for sure that everything is in God's care. And so we cry to the heavens in our distress. Our cries are heard. God is responding in love and hope. Let's come before God with expectant hearts and spirit. Let's be ready to receive the blessed gifts of the Savior. Amen. And will you please rise and sing with me our opening hymn. 245, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Thou mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God
All right, thank you, Caleb Bruss. So let's pray. Lord, tonight we come before you, knowing that you are Emmanuel, and that we'll rejoice when you come to us next Sunday. So you are the Lord God of love. We have truly succumbed to the grease slide in the Christmas. We have cleared our lives with schedules so busy we barely have time to breathe. We plan prepare, cook, clean, party, and yet wind up exhausted and wondering what in the world happened to the joyous Christmas that we had so long ago. In this place on this day, you have called us together to hear your words of encouragement and remind us that you are with us. We don't need to rush about in order to have Christmas, for the witness of your love is here among us right now. Open our hearts and help us proclaim your presence Help us reach out to one another in joy and peace. As we have brought our concerns to you in prayer, remind us again that you hold each one of us great, gently and lovely in your constant care. For we thank you for your love and ask this in the name of the one who, whom you sent to free us, Jesus. Amen. Hark the Herald Angels say, 277. Hark the herald angels say, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful ye nations rise, join the triumph of the sky. With a angelic host proclaim, Christ is Lord in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. <clears throat> Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Live and hold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. When in flesh the God had seen, hail incarnate deity, pleases man with man to dwell. Jesus, or Emmanuel, hark the hand. Oh, the angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Hail the heaven born of peace, hail the sun of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen will in his ways. Mild he lays his glory by, born that men no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. All right, thank you. And the anthem tonight is Sleepin' Adonai, which means Sleepin' Jesus.
All right. And you may have noticed I turned the light off is because I wanted to set that scene in, in that anthem to think of a child sleeping. <clears throat> so we come to the place of prayer tonight. And it is a time where we can lift each other up, show a little bit of love for each other. Of course, we can be thankful that this semester is now over. So we look for we look forward to what is ahead. We continue to pray for the usual people. And of course, I will give you opportunity to lift up those that you know. And the first on tonight is 2203 in his time. We'll do the first verse, pray, and then the second verse. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time, Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way. That you do just what you say in your time. Lord, this evening we come before you. Thinking of the day when we walk up to that manger and we find you asleep in the head. You are sleeping Adonai, who is alive even now in 2022. <sighs> excuse me, excuse me. We are so grateful to have gotten through a very challenging semester one that will be remembered. And we think of this time away from the usual day-to-day -day life. Just think about all the things that we can do from now until January 20th. Certainly, there will be plenty of opportunity to use the one thing that we took away from going to West Haven for 15 months and continuing to use that train as a resource. Certainly, it was well used in these last couple of weeks. We want to go somewhere new. But going somewhere new means facing the fear of going through West Haven in some form of way. That's just how it is. We continue to pray for Charlie. We hope that he has a relapse and hope that he would just take the time to just think about his own actions and Really just to reach out and to put this thing to bed, especially now, since it is the holiday season and a time to show a little bit of love. The same thing for Charles in Springfield. Not really sure why now. We continue to pray for a new Boston, a new Wilbur to come. 
that we can love and cherish just as much as we loved and cherished Wilbur in these last 12 years. And for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. Lord, this time of year, it means something, something different to everybody. In this hustle and bustle and the rush to get, to have the perfect Christmas, well, there's no such thing as perfect. Excuse me. Well, we know there's no such thing as perfect. It means something different for everybody. And we know we cannot forget that that day of the year, the 25th of December, is the day that you were born. But we cannot forget what follows after it. After we talk about your teachings, unfortunately, it leads to the tragic time of the dying and the rising again. QB, a visit to Calvary's Mountain before rising again on that third day. But through all these things, you do everything in your time. We continue to pray for the folks in Parkland, Wisconsin, and everywhere else that where the world has just been turned upside down. So all of this we pray in in so bleh. all this is in that prayer that you taught us saying together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In his time, in his time, he made all things beautiful. In his time, Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way. That you do just what you say in your time. In your time. In your time. You make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, my life to you I bring. May each sign I have to say be to you a lovely thing in your time. <clears throat> All right, so it is offertory time. Me and that's the time where you guys have the opportunity to check out some of the other videos I've been working on and subscribe to this channel and spread the word. We are looking for 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours to get these videos monetized. So please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, 
for all notifications of when new PowerPoints, videos, and walkthroughs come out. And since it is the end of the semester, meet it, that means I probably could do the, some of those recordings again that I had to take down because of academic integrity issues. Thinking I was the thinking I was an instructor. Hey, maybe one day. But in the meantime, the offertory tonight is O Come All You Unfaithful. And that leads into <coughs> Excuse me. And that leads into what we are talking about in the message tonight. And no, that is not a typo. So the ushers please come forward as we receive the evening's gifts and offerings. So O Come All You Unfaithful.
Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy goes as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen <clears throat> more than a week Those that are not faithful will be faithful. You are born you were born for us. And you were crucified and rose again for our pardon. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world. As we have one week left to Christmas and two weeks left in 2022. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Okay, so the reading tonight is Isaiah 7, 10 through 16, and Matthew 1, 18 to 25. And we're going to talk about finding a new relationship after you've been betrayed. And again, and it's a review of Know Your Worth. <clears throat> so Isaiah 7, 10 through 16. God spoke again to Azaz. This time he said, ask for a sign about your God. Ask anything, be it extravagant, ask for the moon. But Azad said, I never do that. I never make demands like that on God. So Isaiah told him, then listen to this. Government of David is bad enough that you make people tired with your pious, timid hypocrisies. But now you're making God tired. So the master is going to give you a sign anyway. Watch for this. A girl who is pre presently a virgin will get pregnant. She'll bear a son and name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. By the time the child is 12 years old, able to make moral decisions, the threat of war will be over. <coughs> Excuse me. At last, those two kings that have you so worried will be out of the picture, but also be warned, God will bring on you and your people and your government a judgment worse than anything since the time the kingdom split. When Ephraim left Judah, the kingdom of Assyria is coming. <coughs> Excuse me, I got like a wicked dry spot in my throat. And now the Matthew 1, 18 to 25, which illustrates that same idea. The birth of Jesus took place like this. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. When they enjoyed their wedding night, Joseph discovered she was pregnant. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. He probably was looking at her like, like, like this. Uh, I didn't, like, 
how were you pregnant? I I didn't do it, anything to make you that way. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. Joseph, chagrined by, by Noble, determined to take, take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. While he was trying to figure a way out, he had a drink. God's angel spoke in the drink. Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring a son to birth. And when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus, which means God saves. Because he will save his people from their sins. This would bring the prophet's embryonic revolution to full term. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Then Joseph woke up. He did exactly what God's angel commanded in the dream. He married Mary. We did not consummate the marriage until she had the baby. He named it Jesus. Here is the reading. We got the blessing to read of these holy words. So, Let's talk about finding a new relationship after you've been betrayed. This clearly is still something that has yet to be determined. How do we how do we be with somebody new and understand the fact that the people that we were with previously they did us wrong. Why would we want to go back to them? And this is what he's talking about here. God is with us. He is always with us. As I've talked about numerous times, <clears throat> he is with us from the time we get up in the morning until the time we go to bed. And this is what the birth of Jesus is. He came to save us. To help us get out of our own way. Help us to know our worth. To him and whoever else comes along. But the reality is, sometimes, after we've been betrayed, we don't We don't think about our worth. We just think, oh, like, oh, well, that's we automatically think, oh, everybody is like that. <clears throat> but believe it or not, the answer is no. Not everybody is like who we've been with. You have to find the right people. You have to find an appropriate outlet to meet people. <clears throat> now, in the era of social media, that's a great way to meet people, but you have to do it safely. Like today, I met somebody in Providence. When I was up there, I made sure met him in public. That way, if something did go wrong, you just go. Obviously, nothing did go wrong, but meet somebody in public. Don't meet them at home. Most of the time, if you meet somebody in their house, usually you'll end up in the sack with them. At least in my experience, this is what has occurred. You know, when I met Eduardo, Charlie, and whoever, and you know, the list goes on and on. But we have to be safe. We have to know our worth. 
we have to know, have to understand the fact that we're not a convenience to anybody. We have to have the ability to say no. If something doesn't feel right to us, we say, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Or, or no, I say, no, I don't want that. But a lot of times we don't know how to say no. <clears throat> And just think about this. Joseph, Mary's soon-to-be husband, finds her impregnated, but he knows that he's like, he's like this. Like, am I really seeing this? I mean, he's like, wait a second. I didn't do anything to make you that way. How are you that way? You see, that's how God works. This this is all about our spiritual belief, knowing that this is how God works in our lives. The thing is, how do we know our worth? Our worth is not monetary values. It's what we think is right. And what we and it's knowing the difference between right and wrong. <clears throat> For example, okay, so the last three trade trips have been up and then east. Well, now it's time to to as part of this rotation. Now it's time to go the other way. Now, that is a scary thought, isn't it? I'll tell you why it is a scary thought. Because it involves going through a place that we called home for 15 months. And it doesn't have to be that. It, it doesn't have to be guys. By us knowing who we are and us understanding the fact that what was done, it had nothing to do with us. We were in the right and he was in the wrong. <clears throat> and just realizing, just realizing, oh, just passing through now. You know, the there was a question that was brought up to me from Michelle, and it was a thought that I had on Thursday. I was thinking, well, the guy from Springfield, I haven't seen him in two years, and now he now he's coming to Mohegan on Monday. What does he want? It's like, why now? Why after all this time that he wants me again? That's number one. Number two, is that a sign of things to come? <clears throat> so let's think about what that means. Is this the sign that what we've been waiting for for two years now is this the sign that Charlie will reach out and apologize to us? Most likely, no. But the thing is, we don't know these. It's like we don't have a crystal ball. We can't ask the eight ball. But God has the answer. He is with us. And that's why the prayer song today was in his time. He does everything in his, in his, on his own schedule, on his own accord. Not like the way we live, which is 
go, go, go every waking moment. That's not the way to live. It isn't. You wear yourself out, you get cranky, and then you realize then then you realize, uh, you know, when you have the time to do something, you're just like, oh, I can't do it. You need time for yourselves, guys. Self care is so important. To so show love and affection to one another. To so love one another as he has loved us. We've read John 13. I'm not going to read it tonight. Where he said, where Peter said, Master, you wash my feet. You may not understand now what I'm doing, but it'll be clear to you later. And then he said, well, I'm really not concerned about your hygiene, but your heart. The heart is very tender. Something has to give. And something has to give with the people that choose to betray us, to think that we are things that obviously we are not. Uh, somebody said that I was passive aggressive. And you got one saying, you know, and thinking everything I say is a joke and so on. We don't need that. No. No. So how do we find a new relationship? Well, first, I would say take care of yourself first before taking care of some somebody else who potentially could be your other half. But as we go into this Christmas week, just think about it. Think about the time that you will have with your loved ones, the people that you love. And obviously, who knows? Maybe another black and white friend will be here too. You never know. But obviously the goal with that is next summer. So we can have someone new. Someone that we can love and cherish. Just as much as we loved and cherish Wilbur, we can love and cherish another Boston. Just like we got that new car this year, we are loving and cherishing it. Because it was a need. And, we've, and I have had zero problems. Zero. So as much as I loved and cherished Charlie, We can love and cherish a new Boston and then love and cherish a new man down the, down the road. So know your worth. Have some self-respect for yourself and certainly he will shine his light on you every day. Every step of the way, from now until the beginning of next semester and even beyond, because he does everything in his time. And when he said, God is with us, yes, he is. He's with us each and every day, specifically in this time of year. It's not about some guy on your roof in the middle of the night. You know, leaving you a bunch of stuff. No. 
It's about the love that God has for us, the birth of Jesus, who is here even now. Amen. Closing hymn tonight is 2173, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark. Is shining, Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us, set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance by the blood I man. Your brightness search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, Spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Set forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display likeness ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here may our lives tell your story shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the father's glory place Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be love. We see the benediction. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you remember that he is always with us this day and every day. So, enjoy this Christmas week. And we will be back next Saturday for Christmas Eve.
Amen. Praise who in thy name are gathered here. This was the brightness of thy face, and be forever near. Uh, Yeah. Uh-huh.